Welcome to episode number three. Rob Campbell from Eye on the Target Radio joins me tonight as we continue to discuss the issues going on in Virginia with their gun bans and their ban on training, possibly for 2020. And here we go. It's another week of Protect You Radio. I'm John McCreary. I'm your host again this week. And Rob's sitting in. I don't know how much he's going to jump like in. The earliest you've made it on the air. So far, <laughs> the the We're getting better every week, Rob. Well, it, it's... Mike gets out and you get in and figure out where he's at. We'll get it, Dan. I'm still stumbling along. And, you know, this is, is it is what it is. You get, you know, it's what you get paid. You know, how much money there are salaries here. We're paying Rob double this week of what he got paid last week. So, what is that? Uh, half a <laughs> half a thing of tea and a full thing of water this week. So Rob again sitting in and making sure I don't do any shenanigans and break things or get anything crazy going on I over here. I can't really t- say that because I was trying to use that other computer and I can't make it work. <laughs> either, so. so Rob and I over here. Every time we come in, something seems to be a, a little uh, catawampus, and we uh, work clicking. I, and I called a couple of my friends even, and they couldn't help help me with it. So well, when the password won't, well, when the keyboard won't work, and won't let you p- type in a password. Right. <laughs> Time for and you go out the window. You're like, done at that point. There's nothing else to do from there. Remember, remember the old SCTV when they used to throw the TVs out the window? <laughs> That's how I feel. Some what was the uh, what was the uh, office space when they used to beat the <laughs> beat the printer and take the printer, throw it out in the field, and then beat it. That's how I feel some days with technology. It uh, it baffles me at times. And what can you do? You just roll with it, right? I mean, nobody's trying to kill us in here. You know, I wake up every morning, and uh, you know, I've got a great family. I've got a great life. Um, yeah, I can't complain. You know, I know there's a lot going on political wise. There's a lot going on that seems like it's shenanigans. Um, but at the end of the day, we're still in a pretty free country. Um, we've got a way better than a lot of places. So I, I you know, I can't complain. <laughs> Yeah, you, you could still buy toilet paper in this country. Uh, yeah, I mean, look at Venezuela, man. <laughs> Venezuela is a hot mess. I yeah. mean, you got to stand in line for toilet paper. you got to stand in line for think food. Of, think about it. They ate the animals in the zoo back in May. That's insane. <laughs> they broke, they kicked down the doors at the zoo and started eating animals. That's And part of that is, you know, your economy is out of hand. They're communist, <laughs> socialist, sorry, whatever you want to call it. And our country is headed that way quickly. Not as quickly as some would imagine, but it wouldn't take much to push it that way. And as you look at younger kids coming up, they are... You know, not none of them lived through socialism. They've just heard about it in school and read about it in books. So when I was a kid, though, we were we were taught to hide under our desk because the the Russians were going to nuke us, and uh, we were uh, it was uh, better dead than red stuff. And I, I still believe better dead than red, quite frankly. But uh, <laughs> you know, that's, you know, nobody. I, you know, I, I can't imagine living in common. You know, I, I was fortunate. I got to learn under Gabe Suarez for a long time. And Gabe, <laughs> when he was young, his family had to escape Cuba. Um, you know, middle of the night, gave up their business and ran to America with like $5 in their pocket. If you want to talk to somebody about communism and how it works, just talk to Gabe sometime. He was more than willing to talk about it. Go to Suarez International or Warrior Talk and just listen in on some of his stuff or read. He, he did a whole manifesto on communism and what a horrible thing it is and how it screwed up his entire life. Now, he's a great example of somebody who came here and made it, and that's what this country is about. Come here and do what you need to do and make things happen. Well, a lot of things, if you, if you look at it, it's, it's going out and doing something. Yeah. It's, I, it's, it's not standing by waiting for something to happen. It's, it's actually going out and making it happen. Yeah, you have opportunity here. That's the, that's the beauty. The, nope. other day, the other day there was a show on TV. It's like a billionaire boss or something like this. <laughs> the guy was a billionaire. He, uh, he he just left his regular life, and they dropped him off in a city in, in the U.S. somewhere with a, like a, a one-ton truck, and he had $200 in his pocket and and his cell phone. That was, uh, that was all that he had. And he was he was going to uh, I think thirty days he had to make a million dollars or make a build a business worth a million dollars and uh, to watch him go he he didn't want to work for somebody he wanted to be his own boss because that's where the money was at yeah and uh, he, he watched the watch the show and watch it from a different perspective than just watching the show he was trying to find that big break by make by doing the the work himself getting the job and making all the money for himself instead of having to pay somebody to do it. And, uh, Crazy concept. We're all created equal. <laughs> we all have the same chances. Um, so, yeah, I mean, here's a guy who learned somewhere along the way that, that he could be self-sufficient. Right. If he's, if he's starving to death, though, he, he had nothing against going and working a day somewhere for somebody. But if, when, it, when the money was gone, but 
In the meantime, if he had money in his pocket, he tried to uh, turn $2 into $10 by uh, doing something with it. And uh, Yeah, I mean, how many people have you seen in this country who pull themselves up by their bootstraps and just make it happen? It's a beautiful thing that's, you know, with a little bit of effort and, and some hard work. Now, guys, I can tell you, not everyone makes that happen. Well, people and fail. So, and sometimes you, you spend your money on something and it, it doesn't go the way you planned, and now all of a sudden you end up with, 10,000 widgets and no place to store them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, people fall on their faces. That's that's reality, but at least you took that chance and, and you went out and did something for yourself and, and tried to make it happen. The best part of this country is set up so that if you do fall on your face, somebody's there to catch you and prop you back up long enough to get you moving again. Yeah, most of the time, you know, there's people out there who, you know, and if you're willing to go out and do some networking, there's a lot of people out there who will help you. Well, there are people thing. make friends, keep their phone number and see what what they can do to make you rich one day. Yeah, I, I I'm not going to make it rich at this show, but man, I appreciate Rob and Amanda for letting me do this. I mean, I could Still be sitting at my house doing nothing. Uh, well, and instead, some things are stepping stones to other things. So it's what what are you doing now versus what do you want to be doing? And also too, it's like a everybody's got to have a hobby. I mean, yeah. some hobbies are expensive and some aren't. <laughs> and much to my wife's chagrin, I would be sitting at home right now, and she would be staring at me, wondering why I wasn't leaving and, and wishing I, I, I was leaving. <laughs> You got those Wait. VU meters up because we're really blasting. Are you through blasting my... through your headset there? Well, somebody. Last when I listened last week back to my stuff, it sounded like we were a little low. The music was high. We were a little low on the mic, so I just want to make sure that we're equal when we're playing music. This uh, I'm click on that and then, then we'll there we go. Really yeah, so our meters are still pretty low. I think our head our headsets might be up too high. Okay, so could be. <laughs> so we'll keep working out. Like I said, listen last week. So if any of you who listened last week and it sounded like it was low, my apologies. We're still working through some we're of this still, stuff. We're still learning. <laughs> <laughs> we are. So if all of a sudden it sounds fuzzy, it's because we pegged the meters, and I apologize. Um, we'll get we'll work it through eventually. If you want to join the show tonight, it's Karma Radio. Um, give us a call, 330-673-2428 or 673-CHAT. Uh, and it'll get you on the air with us. And uh, we'll have a little fun. Uh, we'll have fun regardless of what uh, whether you call or not. So we'll just torture you from this end <laughs> if you don't want to call and be part of it. Um, I uh, want to touch on Virginia this week. Um, a lot going on on there. I feel like they are the hotbed right now of what you're going to see gun rights and things going a certain direction this year. Uh, well, I'm, glad, I'm glad to see that they finally woke up, got off the couch, and they're out doing something. I mean, when 20,000 people start showing up at town hall meetings and stuff, things start going their way. As you can see, the, the, uh, the newly elected... Uh, Officials are backing down on some of their stance about calling in the National yeah. Guard and all this stuff. And this just goes to show you, this is this is what it's about. People have to jump on board and make things happen. You know, if you sit around, you're going to get the government you deserve. But if uh, you say, go if out you and move, if you don't care, they don't care either. So <sighs> they'll just do what they want. If you don't care, they will they will gladly <laughs> tell you what you need to care about and how you should care about it and how you're going to live your life. Um, you know, back to that whole kind of American you know, spirit. I'm getting a lot of people that are. Wanting to know how come the NRA isn't in Virginia doing something, and right now there's really nothing go- for the NRA to do. The, I mean, when they, when you see twenty thousand patriots there at the meeting, no, that's the NRA in action right there. That's but the old the, I'm the, the NRA, official, <laughs> right? But the official NRA really has nothing to do. There's there, nothing has been uh, put in paper, put uh, filed in the courthouse, anything like this. It was just two loudmouths shooting their mouth off about. This, that, and the other. What I'm going to do to you, or whatever. It's kind of like the WWE wrestling. Um, they haven't <laughs> they haven't started swinging chairs yet, but, <laughs> but we're at that point. No, we're, you know, we're still at the I mean, ballot box. Until they, uh, until one of them files something in the state house or in the courtroom or something, there's really nothing to be done. It's it's just um, get get prepared. You, you know, it's coming. So stock up on your spam. Stock up on your ammo. <laughs> Get a couple of warm spam. blankets and some good shoes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, just some of the wording because they, they pre-filed some of those those bills, and I think that's what threw everyone into a tizzy. Was what are we, what are these the wording on some of these were uh, kind of heinous? Um, I think for the them to pre-file, that, you know, the, the it was coming. Actually, fired everyone up was when the guy said he was go- going to get the National Guard to uh, come in and and deal with it. So that's where everybody kind of lost their mind yeah it, it's it's crazy it's just some of the um some of the wording i'm, I'm reading and some of the things i'm seeing this was um i pulled an article from uh it's called blue 
Blue Virginia website, which is, of course, a heavily Democratic website. And this was written by a guy named Andy, and I'm going to butcher this, Schmuckler. <laughs> he sounds like a Schmuckler when you read this. Um, so here's what he says. A few things that should be pointed out regarding the movement among some Virginians, including many in our area. To resist unconstitutional, in quotes, laws concerning guns that they expect will be passed in the General Assembly this year, now that the Democrats are in power. First, it would seem more appropriate to see what gets passed before manning the ramparts to fight against unconstitutional infringement, infringements of people's rights to bear arms. Um, listen, some of the wording on those things, if you look at it and they start talking about taking away your right to train and, and assemble, um, yeah, guess what? That, that's an infringement. Um, and it's, it's a pre, you know, they pre filed this stuff. The so is, they had intentions on doing this. Well, the thing is, what they're doing right now, it would be illegal when they're with their lack of assembly thing. So right now, they, what they are doing that's starting to have some, uh, I guess, traction is uh, is going to be illegal under the new rules. So when, how long do you wait? And all of a sudden, then you can't do it. Yeah, that's exactly it. Right, Rob, because if they would pass that, what they're talking about, and right now Virginia is the House, the Senate, and the governor are all Democrats. Right. There, there's 95 counties in the state, and uh, they uh, all voted Democrats in. So the whole state is run by Democrats right now. And that's the first time in 25 years, I believe, if I remember correctly, Virginia has been at least balanced somewhat. So for them to talk, start talking about what's <laughs> unconstitutional. So he says, you know, I'm not aware of any proposed measures that are unconstitutional. Well, right to assembly? Yeah. <laughs> You're getting into, you start taking away firearms rights? Yeah. Those are unconstitutional. So he says it's simply mistaken to assume that any law regulating gun guns violates the Constitution. <sighs> How many times do we have to talk about this? <laughs> uh, shall not be infringed mean. Uh, exactly. Thank you. Anyone read that? Yeah, exactly. I don't so. know if the, eventually the Supreme Court's going to decide what shall not be infringed actually means, but... Yeah, and they're going to have to. I mean, if, if they want these... You know, the funny part, if you read the Federalist Papers and you and that, they, they were fully prepared for you to have your own battleship. They just were not prepared to hire you to actually use it on their <laughs> behalf. That was... <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I don't know how, uh, and the Federalist Papers are probably something a lot of people need to go back and read, just because it, it lays out the Second Amendment stuff pretty uh, specifically. I mean, you can't get... <laughs> what it was is they were, there was actually the Federalist Papers and the anti side of it, and they were they were talking through in, in a newspaper format of what the, what, what the new stuff was all about, and this is what these papers are about, so... It, it kind of lays out and, and actually goes into detail in the, some of the stuff that's in there. So he goes on to say, Secondly, citizens do not have the right or the power to determine on their own or say so whether or not the law is unconstitutional. Um, I think that's called voting. <laughs> we do have a right to that. We do have a right to protest. We have a right to speak up. We have a right to push back on politicians. That is part of the Constitution. He says we have the right to challenge a law's constitutionality, bringing the issue before the courts, but it is up to the courts to make that determination until the courts strike down such a law or put a stay on it. Citizens are legally obligated to obey it. Um, yeah, we have the right to protest when laws are unconstitutional. And I forget the wording, but any law that is... And if it, if it goes against the Constitution, it's according to, I think it was, I don't know what the actual statute is, it, do, it doesn't count. I'm blanking on it, Rob. And I know exactly, we're both thinking of this exact same thing right now, and I'm and blanking on it. As, as, if it goes counter to what the Constitution says, then it really has no standing yeah, until, exactly. the, until the courts hear it. So. It's exactly right. So, you know, some of that stuff is, it's constitutional. We have that right. And, and according to this, he says you can't determine whether something's unconstitutional. But in their world, if we found it unconstitutional and we would protest it, some of the stuff that they were writing and trying to get passed would take away our right to assemble to do this stuff and protest it. So that's shenanigans, man. You know, you're talking so out both sides of your mouth. The, that's why the Founding Fathers gave you the Second Amendment so that when the, you couldn't talk about it, you could still uh, – Prove your point. Exactly. That's what the whole, I mean, you can't have one without the other. You can't have one without two. You can have two without one. And they both kind of protect each other. You know, if you take away your guns, you've got one. And if they take away one, you've got two. So they're, um, uh, they work. So they work together. There's a reason those guys got together. There's a reason they wrote it. Um, you know, you think about it. They wrote that in, what, 1787. And uh, how much, how did they know what, 
all the stuff that's coming up, I mean, space travel and stem cell research, and how can they write it vague enough to cover all new things, but yet strict enough to uh, actually be worth something? Yeah, and, and we have ways <laughs> that they can, you know, they can come together and they can change, they can make amendments, that, that's what the whole thing's about, um, and it, it needs to be pretty serious for them to come together and change an amendment. Well, they, they have a way of doing I think it, it, there's a certain number of states that have to get together to uh, do a constitutional uh, convention. Um, the worst part is, is if something like that happens, bad things can happen as well as good things. So anytime you open the lockbox, you, you don't know what's coming out of it. No, you really don't. Um, so I got a text <laughs> from somebody that said, if we have the right to do all these things that we're talking about, the protests and stuff, do you think we have the right to take a knee at the flag, too? Is that the same thing as the right to protest? Absolutely. So as much as I dislike Colin Kaepernick and some of his shenanigans. Right. I mean, that's the reason why he's still out there doing his thing instead of being either thrown in jail or beat to a pulp. <laughs> yeah. And listen, you guys, I am 100% behind Colin Kaepernick's right to do what he did. I know it sounds counterintuitive, but yes, he has that right to protest. He has a right to do whatever he wants. But remember, when you do these protests and you do certain things, there can be repercussions. The same thing with gun rights. If you are willing to stand up and protest some of these things, there could be repercussions. You could find yourself in jail if you or, protest against what we consider unconstitutional laws. Or like Levi Finnicum, you could find wind up dead. Yeah, and, and Rob, <laughs> I mean, I know some of our listeners probably don't know who Mr. Finnicum is, but go, give a quick background on who that was. Uh, he was uh, with the uh, Bundy Ranch uh, stuff out. West, there was two different form, Bundys, one in Nevada who was uh, at a standoff at the ranch, and then later there was the uh, the boy, uh, was it Almond, I think his name is, w took over the uh, some kind of a uh, park building or something. Yeah, in yep, a, in yep. a, a, like a wildlife preserve. They actually uh, a sit-in with guns, basically. <laughs> right, and so uh, Leroy was killed at that particular uh, juncture in history with the by a, a federal sniper yeah they yeah uh, so they were kind of moving down the road and, and all this was breaking loose so this was this basically went over land rights and the uh, government trying to take away their land rights and being able to feed their uh, cattle and stuff and you probably remember some of you probably saw in the news the guy on the overpass with a gun pointed at federal agents um there's repercussions of that. You could lose your life if you decide to stand up against what you think is an unconstitutional law. You may end up in jail. Um, you have a right to protest and take a knee on the flag. Um, you know, you have a right to stand on the flag. Now, God help you if I'm there. <laughs> I, I defend your right to do that, absolutely. But, um, yeah, there are certain things. There's, there could be repercussions if you protest, absolutely. Um, and there are people who are willing to... Um, Take those consequences. You know, our, the entire Constitution was built on men who were going to be hanged. I mean, they, every single one of them, when they signed their name to that paper, it was a protest. And every single one of them knew they could end up dead. They could lose every piece of property they owned. Their families could be put in jail. So, yeah, those, those are guys who stood up and did what they thought they were doing. And this is what's going on in Virginia. And for reasons being, as, you, as I read through some of this stuff tonight, you know, there are people who are willing to take away constitutional rights. And I know we can debate all night about what the not the well, infringed of, means. Some of it with the with personal liberties and that, or the fact that you are, you can do what you want as long as you don't force me to do something that I don't want. And uh, there's, a, there's a spot where your rights overlap with mine, so the, there's a, a fine line right there at that particular spot. And unfortunately, we seem to have gotten to a point in this country where <laughs> you can't have opposing views. If you have an opposing view, you're labeled, um, you know, you're a redneck, you are, you know, um, uneducated, you're stupid because you don't believe like a liberal believes, yep, and vice versa, you know, uh, you're called a libtard, you know, I, I hate the name calling stuff, it's driving me bonkers. If you disagree with my stuff, okay, that's fine, I'm not going to call you names, well, let's have a discussion. I guess like they say, when you, when you run out of things to say, then you go to calling names like schoolyard um, bullies, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's it. And you know, what? sit down. And, and again, we may not agree. And listen, you guys, I understand why people get heated over these things. Um, but yeah, and again, back to the protesting flags and things like that. You can't agree with gun rights and things like that, and then turn around and, and tell people they can't kneel against the flag. Again, repercussions. You're going to lose your career. 
You made that choice. You're going to lose millions of dollars in contracts. You made that choice. Um, same thing with gun rights. If you decide to stand up to some of these people, you might lose your rights. You might end up having to hire an attorney to get you out of jail, and that's okay. If you're willing to do that, then knock yourself out. You know, um, there may be or coming to a time you, where you, you have to. You may end up dead. You, you could, like, <laughs> yeah, Vinica. I mean, that is a horrible story. That guy believed in his rights, and you know, taken down, got out of the car, and you know, if you watch the video, some people say he reached for something. There's no definitive video on that. Um, and they gun the guy down on the side of the road. It's it's it sucks. It's what happens sometimes when you're willing to stand up for your rights. Um, you know, here's another guy who um, this came out of the Washington Post editorial board, um, and this talks about vigilantism. Okay, with a, it's a luring tingle. I love some of the <laughs> some of the descriptions here. It's a luring tingle of defiance and frontier justice conjures a cinematic idea of American individualism. That sentence right there. When I first read it, just just grated on me. They act like American individualism is a horrible thing because you you chose gun rights, because you chose liberty. You are an American individual, and you should be <laughs> put down because of that. That's insane to me. Um, it goes on to say a similar impulse at work among adv- advocates of the so-called Second Amendment sanctuaries movement, a trend in mainly rural counties, declaring they refuse to enforce restrictive state gun laws. Are you kidding me? Rob, would you say how many counties are in Virginia? It's, it's 95, but if you look at it, it's, it's mainly the rural ones that are uh, the thing. That, the ones that are right there in uh, Reston and right, 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 just outside of Washington, D.C., all of the Washington, D.C. employees basically live there, and so most of those are of the liberal persuasion, yeah. and so they vote a different way than what the over-the-mountain people on the other side of the, co- the state do. So call them what you want. I, they take that as almost a disparaging remark from them, but as what you're seeing is of those 95 counties, I believe I read earlier tonight, 78 of them have voted towards these constitutional um, Second Amendment cities, so or sex, uh, Second Amendment sanctuaries. So the that's, thing is, that's not just rural kids. Right now, the Second Amendment... Um, Sanctuary really means nothing. They're nothing, but they're protests. <laughs> but they, but they have given them a name, and they've out, they've drawn a line in the sand, basically. That is and exactly so, what that is, Rob. You're so right. It's, uh, uh, it, it may not mean, mean nothing now, but give it a couple of months, it may actually get its own uh, set of rules or definition in the dictionary. Yeah, I mean, these are the <laughs> same people who are fine with um, illegal immigrant sanctuary cities. I mean, Virginia. The governor there is fine with illegal I sanctuary you, cities. I would if you could see this on a map, you'll see that all along the coast is going to be the the ones that are not the sanctuary, and everything inland from ninety five. I think west. when I looked earlier tonight, even those had turned. There were there were a couple in the middle, um, and most of the coast had gone too. Now, I mean, it's a of the ninety five seventy nine, I believe was the number. So that's huge. I mean, when you <laughs> hill people, that's that's starting to get into the major cities. Um, so it's, it's really, I think people are finally stepping up and this is where Virginia used to be. This yeah. is, and the funny part was the other day the the, uh, the liberal media had put out that there was um, 429 million guns in the U S from since 1986, <laughs> since 86. Yeah. That's when their, <laughs> their data started, but they didn't bother to say from say 1865 when cartridge guns came into play, how many of those are still operational and, and ready to go. I mean, there's like 7 million M1 grands. There's a, uh, Seven million eighteen ninety four Winchester thirty thirties out there. There's a whole bunch of Marlins. I don't know how many Marlins they made, but if they made seven million, million Winchesters, they had to make five million Marlins. Yeah. Um, what Yamamoto <laughs> say? If you invaded America, there would be a gun behind every blade of grass. And I get yeah, it. You bring out a curio and relic, and there's seven million curio and relics. That is a formidable group of human beings. Uh, and guys, please do not take this. John said we should rise up and shoot. No, that is not where I'm at. That is absolutely not where I'm at. But if some of this Virginia yet, stuff, right? will, yeah, well, well I, Rob, I, I absolutely am not that guy. But if people start coming into your home and you're not willing to stand up to that level, then what's next? You know, and and some of the wording they're using is is taking everyday people, you know, and during, making them criminals. During the original Revolutionary War, less than ten percent of the actual inhabitants of the new colonies um, fought in the Revolutionary War. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's a whole reason there's that three percenter thing, and that has to do with how many people actually stepped up. Um, th- if three percent of the people step up 
and fight back, look what happens. That's amazing. When you're seeing that in Virginia, how many people are stepping up and, you know, being heard? I, I've seen some of these town hall meetings. Um, and what do they call them, Rob? Board of, of register? No, not board of registers. They have a different word for, like, their city councils. But it's the same thing. They're, they're getting 2,000 people at these things. They're getting <laughs> five and 600 in the rural areas where there's probably only 700 people that live there. But they probably only uh, get, like, seven during the regular cycle yeah look at look at any town hall meeting just watch one of those government channels there's like three people five people who regularly come and three new ones this week because they had they have something going on that they wanted to know about listen i've been to my little townships um board meetings and there you're right rob there if if it's a hot topic there's five people there you know because somebody's road didn't get salted or something you know when you start turning out two thousand people and they're backed up into the parking lot this is what it's about now why they didn't turn out and vote I have no idea. I, I wish I had the, the idea. That's the interesting part. It's, what's today, the 16th? Yeah. So a, a month and a half ago, they could have went to the ballot box and voted and instead of having to show up today and stomp their feet. Yeah. Um, had they, it, but 23 of the counties didn't even post a, a Republican contender for any of these races. So it goes to show you that people aren't taking an interest in politics. Um, if you want to be a, a congressman or a senator, by all means, call somebody and ask them. They're, they're begging for people, qualified people. Um, they, you may have to start out at your local school board or township trustee, but it doesn't take too many stepping stones to get you to where you're, you're in Washington. Yeah, and I know you and Amanda were on the front lines when Concealed Carry came to Ohio. This is similar stuff, except they're, you know, they in Ohio it was one issue. Um, and it was about concealed carry and all these concealed carry walks and stuff that people were doing and, and Amanda and Rob doing things to draw um, attention to us not being able to carry. You Similar believe, situations. You wouldn't believe how many pages of law I read before they finally passed something because they, they put something out and then I'd have to go through it, all of it and then all of a sudden they change it and then you have to go back through and read. So 180 pages and then all of a sudden that one's out the window. They get put a whole new one out and you got to go back through it again. What would you say, Rob? Ten years probably it took by about, the time people started rolling with this? It was about ten years. And, you know, the funny part is uh, uh, an ink cartridge for your printer only prints about 130 pages. So um, you, you're using two or three ink cartridges <laughs> for that, <laughs> a, a bill as a, a, to see it. Uh, and it should not be that way. I'm sorry. That's shenanigans. There's no way that we should be having to print out hundreds and hundreds of pages. This is, the, And then they start tacking stuff on. It's, it's just ridiculous. So, I mean, you can kind of see where some of this in Virginia is, is just gotten nuts. Um, and just some of the wording and how people are, again, throwing around names and, and talking to people. Um, so I've thrown out some terms out there that people may not even be sure what they are. Um, so Second Amendment sanctuary cities, what exactly is that? Um, you know, like Rob said, there is no legal standing to a no, sanctuary they're just, city. They're just saying they're not going to, if there's any law passed, they're not going to abide by it. And that was where they said they would call in the National Guard at that point. So if the local sheriff isn't going to handle it, then they were going to put the National Guard on onto the people at that point. And, uh, baffling. Absolutely. Really. The National Guard, you were going to call it the National Guard because people are assembling and protesting? That is exactly the type of wording that's in these bills. Um, anyone remember Kent State? Yeah. I mean, I hate to bring up a tragedy like that, but this is the type of stuff because they disagree with you because they are trying to push through unconstitutional stuff that they're willing to call it the National Guard on you. That is, I'm, for once, I'm at a loss for words. This is, I just can't even fathom that I'm going to be at a protest. Um, you know, and I think back to these open carry walks. So do you have another vocabulary word there that you were, was that a list of words that you were trying to? <laughs> I just, you know, talking about the, the sanctuary city stuff. So it's usually a resolution by a jurisdiction or municipality uh, to not expend resources or enforce certain gun control measures. Did, so, you see, did you see where the one sheriff said that he would just deputize everyone in the... That guy's my new hero. He's like, I will deputize everybody and we will fight this back legally because you're all deputized. <laughs> and that's some of what this boils down to. If the... If the state tries to pass this type of stuff and these sanctuary cities, these resolutions that they're passing, they basically have the power to not um, engage in the law enforcement side of this stuff. So they could choose to not enforce the laws. They could choose to not put the money towards enforcing these laws, which then gets back into, 
hey, here comes the National Guard because yeah. you guys aren't doing what we told you to do. You know the funny part? When you look at this on a state level, um, like Oregon, Washington area out there, they're, yeah. they're, they're the big cities along the ocean run what's happening in the state. And so we're, we're talking that they want to get rid of the Electoral College in the United <laughs> States. Well, these guys are talking about possibly getting an Electoral College. <laughs> well, Bless you. Getting an electoral college inside of their state because this way, then each of those jurisdictions only get one vote instead of they go by the popular vote. And the, these big cities that are packed full of people override all of the rural areas. Of yeah, and that's where this is again. These are the rural areas. Sometimes now the cities are getting involved. It's a pushback against you know state and federal things. You look at California and their goofy lo- rules. Oh. That, it's because L.A. has more people than all of Northern California together, so the, the, Northern California's vote means absolutely nothing to the when they're voting. Yeah, if we didn't have Electoral College, we would be bending to the whim of whoever's in basically L.A., San Francisco, and New York. Um, and I, right, it, the, big, the big centers that they, they usually vote for the Democrats would be just all controlling at that point, so... That's what. That's the part beauty of the electoral college. It's kind of funny that they were able to see this that many years ago, and uh, or foresee this and uh, make it happen in a way that still functions. Yeah. So some, you know, there are states who the whole state, you know, right from the get go, um, back when some of this started happening, back even in 2010, states like Alaska, Idaho, Kansas, Wyoming, they they stepped up. Um, you know, there are 327 outside of states. If you start looking at counties across the country, there's about 327 counties that have some type of Second Amendment sanctuary resolutions. Um, and again, Virginia, about 76 out of the 96. Um, and Virginia is just exploding. And it's a pushback to the feds in the state. You know, there was people a, stepping up. There was a lot of them in uh, New Mexico not too long ago when they, their governor was trying some of the gun law stuff. So that a lot of those um, counties in New Mexico have gone to a sanctuary, sanctuary uh county yeah i mean again you guys this is something that you you might want to think about and, and there are ways and I, I i may have time to get to it there's some ways that you can you know push back and if you need to set up a sanctuary city or go to your your officials and, and look at it beforehand write letters call your congressman do your homework before yep. you vote for someone go meet them in person so you get a chance to see who you actually are dealing with and what their stance is on this stuff and remember that they're common sense gun control laws, not always common sense. <laughs> common sense is not so common these days. So, so pay attention and ask the pointed questions as to what, what you're getting for your dollar. Yeah. So, Rob, do you remember what kicked this whole thing off? What, what, do you remember kind of what the knee-jerk reaction? I don't say knee-jerk reaction because I hate that when we talk about tragedy. Do you well, remember kind of what? Which part of it? That's the trouble. Is it, This has been going on since... Um, Basically, the 30s when uh, <laughs> when they were going after Al Capone and uh, yeah, so Virginia is in this latest round seemed to be kicked off by that shooting in the Virginia Beach Municipal Center. Uh, this latest round is kicked off by the fact that Bloomberg put three billion dollars yep. into the into the Virginia um, Democratic Party. Yep, the Republicans did not even bother to put anybody on the field to, to play ball with them. And uh, so it, it was a one-sided race that uh, nobody bothered to get off the couch and go and yeah. see what was going on. And then they seized on the tragedy like they do so many times in gun control issues. They jump on. And but, again, this is not belittling a tragedy. it's not about the, the – the tragedy was just happened to be incidental. They already had all the paperwork drawn up before it happened. Yep, and this fired it up. This, is, this gave them the um, – kind of the flame to make it or the spark to make it move for them and people got on board and they kind of let it roll this is another thing about tragedies if you if the tragedy fits what they want it to be so say a white guy with an ar-15 it's on the news for weeks 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 if if it happens to be a saudi national with a a, a glock pistol and 180 rounds of ammo or something it, it goes away right away and what the thing was in Hawaii like three days before the Saudis shot up Florida 
That you disappeared. That? that disappeared out of the news. Right. It was, it was, they come on, they said three people were killed, blah, blah, blah. They never said who did it. They didn't say anything about it. It's, it's completely gone from the news cycle. So what what was going on with that, and why, why didn't we hear any of that, that details yeah. of that? And this one in, in Virginia Beach, where this took off, um, you know, they still don't know why it happened. The laws that they are trying to push through in Virginia, none of them would have affected that tragedy. They would not have stopped this gentleman. Um, their ban on how often they want you to buy a gun would not have affected the gentleman who did that. Uh, gentleman's the wrong word. The jackass, sorry, um, who pulled off that shooting. Uh, so many of the laws they're trying to pass would have zero effect on as what much he did. As, as much as it sounds goofy with that NRA's line of a uh, thing that stops a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun, it's it's real. If if there's another gun shows up on premises, whether it's by a private citizen or the police or whatever, usually they stop what they're doing and either surrender or shoot themselves at that point. Yeah. So I, next show, I think we might get into active shooter a little bit. Uh, actually, I might put the whole show into active shooter. How to recognize one? How to deal with one? Um, how to recognize one before it even starts? Because uh, we will probably run out of time tonight. But uh, do some reading. One of the best. Uh, authors out there as far as active shooters go, Greg Elifritz, um, that guy is doing some uh, great writing on that kind of stuff. Uh, active Response Training, I believe, is his website, uh, and he does a monthly thing that he puts out. He, he is writing articles every week, but as far as I can tell, as far as active shooters go, nobody is, is delved in into it as far as he has, and he's probably a good one that you should probably be following regardless whether you're talking about active shooters or not. Um, so some of the other things that uh, I want to delve into a little bit, some of the definitions in the the there's really three main things in Virginia that, that really irritate me, and it's the state bills that they were trying to pass and they pre-filed. And Rob and I have talked about these a little bit. Um, I was looking more at State Bill 64 in the past because of the training piece. I didn't look that closely at State Bill 16, and this is the one that starts defining what they are trying to ban. Um, this is baffling. <laughs> You know, they would take basically anyone who owns something like an AR-15, and you would turn into a Class 6 felon punishable by up to five years in prison if you did not, uh, how do you say this, dispense of, dispose of your AR-15. And it's not just AR-15s. I know AR-15s are, oh, it's a scary black gun. Help me. They are used in less crimes than anyone would ever imagine. You know, the whole assault weapon ban thing, the guns that they banned during the assault weapon ban were not guns that were used in crime. So that always turns into a bunch of hogwash, so don't fall for that. <laughs> Oh, so, were they did they outline what, what they were doing, or is it just yeah. with the the standard stuff like the ninety four crime bill with the if it has the pistol grip, if it has a bayonet lug, yeah. if it holds more than thirty rounds of ammo? Or, a ba yes, bayonet lug is in this. I I would love somebody please if you get the chance, and I will try to do this. Let me know if, if a bayonet has been used in a crime in the last five years, and if it has, it's not like it's a a common thing where I need to ban a bayonet lug. The only reason they're doing the bayonet lug is because it's attached to many of these guns are trying to get rid of. So if they ban the the lug, and and a lug is a politician. No, if they ban the lug on the gun, then you're banning the gun. So that's shenanigans. Like I said, you're not seeing a whole lot of bayonets being used by people. Maybe Rob when he's picking his teeth, but outside of that, not a lot of bayonets when, out there. When I was a kid, we'd put the bayonet on and stick it in the ma's ceiling. She'd go off on us. <laughs> you weren't allowed to have the bayonet on the gun in the house. Rob was, Rob was only three feet tall and he had a Mosin, and it would reach the <laughs> ceiling, and it would poke the hole through the ceiling. So if you're not familiar with the no Mosin, the guns, take a look. The 91s are about eight feet long. They could be a boat paddle. They could be... Most, most <laughs> Most guns in that time frame had like thirty-two inch barrels on them. And they're uh, just they're a hoot to shoot, and if and you got shoulder foot problems, long bayonets too. So. <laughs> I could stab you in a different county. Um, so some of the other things they were looking at is you know anything that had a a semi-automatic centerfire rifle that had a fixed magazine with a capacity greater than ten rounds. Yikes. Okay. So a fix, <laughs> fixed magazine or a detachable magazine, either one, huh? The, the detachables, too. Um, so they're getting into that. And it has a detachable. If it had a detachable magazine and it had one of these other fine <laughs> uh, pieces attached to them, a folding stock or tele, telescopic stock, a pistol grip that protrudes conspicuously beneath the action of the rifle. So I keep hearing that they want to ban hunting guns. There's a whole bunch of Mossbergs, I think it's the 935, that are turkey guns that have a pistol grip. So you're not coming for my hunting guns? Hmm. 
It sure sounds like you're coming for a hunting gun that, that has a pistol grip on it. So shenanigans, all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, a second hand grip protruding uh, that can be held by the non-trigger hand. So that gets into anything that has a front, you know, the AR-15 with the, the front grip. Uh, why, really? That makes that gun any more dangerous because I can hang on to it with a, a second hand, whether my hand is in a vertical position or my hand's in a horizontal position. Does that make me more or less dangerous? I, I don't. So, again, they're looking for just shenanigans. A grenade launcher. I I don't own a gun with a grenade launcher. So that's just wonder me. how many grenades have been launched in a crime. I, they, that was exact. That was my next question, Rob. Please, somebody go back, do the research. How many? Here's the other one. A flare launcher. Now there was that guy who defended himself with a flare gun a couple a couple months ago, and I bravo, young man. Improvised weapons light him up. No pun intended. Of course, the usual silencer, flash suppressor, a muzzle brake, a muzzle that's compensator. going to affect those little plastic guns that you use when you're boating? Yeah, why wouldn't it if it's a flare gun? Right. I mean, that you, you, you're now banning things that are safety. And some of these things we're talking about, flash suppressors, muzzle brakes, compensators, these are all things that, quite frankly, make your life easier. Hearing, you know, um, all those things are things that make the gun better and safer, quite frankly. They are things that if somebody's shooting next to you... <laughs> I don't think they're worried about better and safer for you. I don't you. think they I think are. I think I don't it's think whatever they, they can put in there that's going to draw a picture for you that says illegal. Yeah, and then they get into the handgun side of things. Semi- semi-automatic center fire pistols with fixed magazine capacity greater than 10 rounds. The usual detachable magazine that has one of the following char- characteristics. A lot of the characteristics that they <laughs> talk about are the same things you would find on the rifle. And I'm like, oh, now I can understand some of the things that are getting into with the... Um, the pistol with a bayonet yeah. mount and a grenade launcher? Well, I haven't seen the grenade launchers, <laughs> but I have seen a few pistols with bayonets on them. And I'm like, oh, who is... Yeah. And the ones that have the uh, the glass breaker on the magazines always make me laugh. The only one i ever seen that had a bayonet on it was a, the Webley... Um, n- oh, no, the... Early revolvers, like the number one through the number four, yep. break open 455. Some of those came with a, a little short spike bayonet that would fold up underneath yeah. the barrel. Who was it? Uh, Cold Steel, I think, developed one that attached to the uh, the light rail, <laughs> the laser rail on some of the guns, which made me laugh. I, it, they looked hysterical. They were small, stubby. Um, if I got to a point where I needed a bayonet on my pistol, I probably did something wrong and shouldn't have been there in the first place. No, I'm kidding. Uh, they're talking about getting rid of shotguns with the revolving cylinders. So some of those Taurus, uh, what were those? Uh, um, so Yeah, the circuit judges. The circuit judges and stuff, yeah. So, you know, that's, that's a little shenanigan type stuff. Um, just too many things, and a lot of the wording on these are vague, and the vague part is what gets you into trouble. Well, um, that's, well, that's the thing. The, the, the vaguer it can be, the more all-encompassing it would be at that point. Yeah, and again, how many people, Virginia, how many people own AR-15s in Virginia? You know, how many people own these semi-automatic here's shotguns? The, here's the thing. Connecticut, a couple of years ago, banned AR-15s, and they have a registration so you know who owns them. <laughs> Uh, they say that there's 400,000 ba- AR-15s and magazine, high-capacity magazines in the state, but there's only 20,000 police. So they, they didn't bother to go after any of the list of people who have the gun. And it's happening in state after state where they start banning stuff, even magazines. Some of these magazine bans, they know how many were, or they guess or how many are in the state. And, you know, they're talking 400,000 magazines that were above the capacity, and they get like 20,000 turned in, which is still a ridiculously high number. But talk about getting an anti well, they're, lucky, they're lucky they got many. Uh, how many bump stocks Ohio didn't? <laughs> there, was, there was no bump stocks in Ohio when they... Shocking. <laughs> they must have all gone down on those boating accidents. It's, uh, <laughs> um Senate Bill 64 was the other one that just grated on me in Virginia and some of the wording and how they they uh, put it into the bills. And I understand what they might have been going for. I know they were looking at these anti-government groups. That alone is a very sticky term. Um, anti-government, if your government is corrupt and they're doing crazy things, and now you're anti-government because they've broken the law or they've done stuff that's unconstitutional, now you are a felon because you chose to push back on them. Um, you know, these, and Rob and I touched on these a couple weeks ago, um, but these get into things like it's a class five felony. If you teach or demonstrate to any other person to use application or making of any firearm, explosive or incendiary device. Now I, I need to understand what their <laughs> definition of incendiary well, in, device is. In part, uh, so the next line that says just 
pieces and parts of that. So if you got uh, like a cigarette lighter would be part of a c- incendiary device. Yeah, so you're absolutely right, Rob. If I'm at a protest and somebody has done something and, and set yeah. off a firebomb and now I have a lighter, I could be charged they, with a crime. They, they see you flick your bick, you're in big trouble. You are absolutely, yeah, so as simple as, also, as having that. just recently I've I seen that Pennsylvania is trying to outlaw 80% receivers. Oh, stop it. So, but, they're, but they're calling it a gun. The ATF doesn't call it a gun. Under the, their broad plan, all things made out of metal could be a gun at that point. So Pennsylvania is taking a step further than the ATF? Right. And Holy uh, shnikes. New York is trying to do the same thing, but, but both of them are going after these 80% um, guns. And again, I never thought I would see stuff like this out of Virginia and Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania is, <laughs> you get again, back into the hill, people. Good luck and some of that stuff away from some of those guys. Um, it's crazy. Uh, the other one is, so the second part to that uh, S Bill 64, Senate Bill 64, <sighs> assembles with one or more persons for the purpose of training with, practicing with, or being instructed in the use of any firearm, explosive, or incendiary device or technique capable of causing injury or death to persons intending to employ such training for use in or furtherance of a civil disorder. <laughs> so if they... If you're teaching a teenager how to drive a car, do you, does that qualify? Because Yeah, they, and that's where they're headed with this. They use the car to drive down the dock, I think, in, in over in Europe. They, they run 510 trucks out on the yeah. dock so and run people down. This could get into Boy Scout troops, 4-H troops. I mean, this could literally... There are shooting groups in both of those organizations... And not the Boy Scouts... It's not necessarily just about shooting, though. I it's mean, not. I mean, it is about... If you, you think about it, when they're teaching the Boy Scouts how to make alternate forms of fire... Yeah, it's an incendiary <laughs> device. It absolutely would be. Um, think about um, competitive shooting leagues. If a bunch of us are sitting around at one of these shoots, and we start talking politics, and it's against whoever is in power at that time, you've broken this law. And you could be charged with a class well, six felony. Is, the way it looks is you can't have a competitive shooting thing because more than two people can't get together with, yeah. the, with the gun. It so. is absolutely outlawed, though. This is outlawed. If I decide to get together with a group of my friends from church and go shooting one day, yeah, I've now broken the law. I've assembled. If I've shot. <laughs> right. well, like I say, if you're just going to a match somewhere, you, yeah. you can't do that either. So, And if you eat some of the chili from some of the you, ladies at my church, it is incendiary. <laughs> when you say about the stuff, it's, it's it, it sounds farcical about the fact that, well, that's not what they meant, blah, blah, blah. But who's to say when they will get around to where that's what they meant? That, absolutely. And they get to decide. And listen, they're pushing back on that kind of stuff. And, and they're the ones who don't believe you should own a gun. Um, so, yeah, that's where they're headed with that kind of stuff. Uh, it wouldn't take long for us to be considered anti-government. It wouldn't be long for us to be considered, you know, um, who gets to decide what a, uh, a protest is. Um, so, yeah, it, it's getting crazy. So I think we're getting towards the end of the show here. What do we got? A couple minutes here, Rob. Uh, about 30 seconds, actually. Look at that. So, guys, I will bid you adieu. Thank you for tuning in. Join us again next week at 8 o'clock. And remember, Self-Defense Radio runs from basically 4 o'clock in the afternoon to 4 o'clock in the morning. Get all the latest updates on gun rights, self-defense, and all kinds of stuff. Thanks, and we'll catch you next week.